thanks for joining me. Well, I got a project here. Uh, it's a, trying to resolve a problem, and it's been bugging me for a long time. I've thought about it, thought about it, and it's it's one of those projects I'm just going to have to jump into and see where it takes me. Uh, it has to do with the tool post on an older lathe. Uh, this is a Logan 820, uh, 1947 model. There's a lot of lathes that would have a similar problem, but it's got a quick change tool post on it, and that's part of the problem. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I've got a piece of inch and a half bar in here. Uh, I just put it in there as a demonstration to show you what the problem is. Uh, I haven't even got a center drilled in there, but I got a center holding it. Uh, just pretend that's chucked in there. I'm not actually going to turn the light on even. Uh, the tool post, quick change tool post, has got the tool most, most often on the left side. Uh, you can put it on the right side and on the back, however you want it. But either way, it presents a problem. When, the, when it's on this side, you can get up close to the chuck. Whatever type, you can get real close to it if you got the right tooling. Uh, but when you go to the other side, you run into your tailstock. And that's a really common problem. If, if I was running the tool on this side, then I couldn't get close to my chuck. So to get closer to the tool post, or I mean to the tailstock, that's what I usually do. like that, lock my tool, I mean my tail stock down, and then I've got the needed, sometimes, the needed uh, movement there. But the further you have this out, the less support it has. And I've really noticed that. If it's extending out any more than that, I get a lot of vibration out there uh, when I'm trying to take off stock. Uh, I suppose if the tool I mean, if the tail stock was built with the casting kind of leaning out, it would be a lot better. Uh, but this one is not, and I would say a lot of other lathes are not. Now the old uh, lantern style tool posts, the tool was always in the center. So you were automatically closer to the tail stock. Uh, usually you would clear the chuck with your uh, compound because uh, it's usually at an angle too. I don't know why I got my mind set straight. But anyway, uh, it's just a little more convenient position to have it in the middle and narrow. Uh, being narrow, I mean this is really a big chunk here. So I'm going to build a tool post similar to a lantern style but different. And I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do it yet. Uh, but let's just start doing it and see where it takes us. Well, yeah, this might put my lathe to the test. It's two and a quarter inch bar. What do you think? Get my cutoff tool designed to the test. bad. Darn good finish, isn't it? Well, this uh, came out a little bit 
concave, so I'm going to dress the surface of that and make it through. Pretty darn close, really. It's just a few thousand high in the middle. Oh yeah, about an eighth inch above center. Perfect. Okay. You might be saying, okay, how's that different than a lantern tool post? Well, first of all, a lantern tool post has got that really poor T-nut. Second, it's got this rocker. And that rocker, uh, first of all, that T-nut destroys uh, compounds. That rocker right there, is what you set your center height with. And a lot of times it'll move and, and you people over torque it and end up destroying that. So, what I thought, number one, make a better T-nut. I think that'll be a lot stronger. I hope. Number two, make a flat spacer. Washer, spacer, distribute the load. And then shim all my tools. That may seem like a pain, and it might be. But what I thought I'd do is color code my tools and shims. In other words, if that tool is blue, I need a blue spacer. The big advantage to this, in my opinion, is the way the load is transferred to the compound. It's always very well supported right here. The quick change tool post is hanging off to the side and you've got torsional force on your compound, whereas this one is straight down. And I don't know if you've seen the cutoff tool holder I designed, it does the same thing and it works drastically better than the quick change, at least on these older, less solid lathes. 
And the other de design, which or uh, advantage, which we discussed earlier, was getting being able to get all, all the way up to the chuck and all the way to the tailstock because your tool is centered. Anyway, proof is in the pudding, so let's try it. A little more. I'm milling off a little bit on that at a time. That's it. That's it. Ready to try it. Something I noticed here. The uh, tool post is hitting the chuck. So that's something I'm going to have to be careful of. On the quick change it wasn't such an issue because it was always quite a ways on this side of the compound. I guess it's uh, going to be a problem on one side or the other. Let's see how this works anyway. I better work good. Here goes the maiden voyage. <laughs> Probably about 40,000. There's 50. Slow the way down a little bit. Pretty good though. Try a little more RPM. I'm not sure what that is as fast as it'll go. Uh, and a little bit more shallow cut and see what kind of finish we get on the on there. About 10 thousand. Very slightly better. Not not beautiful, but I don't think the finish has anything to do with uh, this post. I think it's mainly uh, sleeve bearings and my bearing clearance. But I'm overall impressed with my tool post. Uh, I don't know if I'll keep using it or not. I'll probably keep using it on this lathe because I don't have a, two quick changes. Uh, having to shim it up is, is a a nuisance but I don't think it's going to be that that much of a nuisance in the long run well that concludes the tool post build and thanks for joining me be sure and subscribe